All right, so this is gonna be kind of a new series, and this is gonna be 10 minute shenanigans uh, with DBS cards, obviously. And uh, this time around, it's gonna be a double feature, but generally it's gonna be one card. I'm gonna put it out there uh, with its, its deck tech, and as well as um, any ideas and things that I've discovered with that card, and how, is, how it would be useful in a deck, etc., etc. but not enough to be a whole deck profile and this time around it's going to be ox king dad at heart and as well as uh legendary flute both set four cards that will be coming out pretty soon here about a week and a half if you if you are watching it when i release it and if you're not watching it well hi from the future and this card is a 4000 attack power they're just doing that so that way this guy kind of sits he doesn't attack with the 5000 just to be kind of petty to other 5000 <laughs> attack power um and this guy gives other cards barrier. So all other yellow battle cards in your area with three or less gain barrier and it can't be chosen by their cards. So anything with choose, they can't do it. Um, so not necessarily that this guy uh, gives himself a barrier, but for one yellow it gives everything else. So let's kind of switch over to untap real quick. All right, so my preferred setup uh, as far as Ox Team goes is either going to be Genyu or Goku. Those are the first two that, uh, that really comes to mind when it, uh, when Ox King kind of release. And that's because with uh, Super Saiyan 2 or Super Saiyan 3 Goku, uh, he can actually do a few different things. So if he opens up, if you're playing mono yellow with two yellow, you can play two Ox Kings and uh, that effectively pretty much gives each other barrier uh, permanently as long as they're on the field. And that's pretty much, that, that's pretty hard to get rid of in general. And everything that you play after three or less is gonna be very, um, very good because it can't be popped. So if you're going against a Cell, if you're going against Universe 7 Frieza who's awakened, if you're going against um, anything that pops or, uh, you know, it, it, it can't be chosen. Anything, or even for the bounces, for all the Hurutagon stuff, all the Tapion stuff, all the Rebirth of Justice stuff, can't be touched. So, um, that is good in itself. Another, another thing, if you are playing um, Super Saiyan 3 Apes, which is what I'm playing right now, if you do get the new SR, which I will be talking about on Friday, if you didn't know, there's a one drop Bardock in which uh, you play it and you choose one in your life. And uh, what I would do personally is play these two guys, generally on for the first turn. And if they, uh, on second turn, most people don't swing because they don't want you to awaken. I would uh, mulligan for a planet Vegeta Play the Planet Vegeta with three energy, get this guy, and then if you have another one of this guy, um, play him, play him, awaken. Or you can play this guy, swing, and then play this guy in which um, will evolve on top of him. So if you don't have him in your hand, or if you don't get him from Planet uh, plan Vegeta, then that's perfectly fine because this guy has barrier, he's not gonna be touched. So that is one thing that you can kind of uh, uh, think about. Another thing is that uh, for Genyu, and as well as this guy, this guy gets barrier too. So if you're playing Super Saiyan 3 Apes, this guy gets barrier, you can safely evolve the King Vegeta on it. Um, if you're playing Ginyu as well, as he should be played, <laughs> instead of like with uh, uh, Ginyu veggies or whatever you wanna play uh, that has Shigesh in it, you can actually play all of the Ginyu cards and they all have barrier. So if you play this guy and you have all of these in your hand with these two, on the field uh, or if you you know help yourself self awaken and then play it for free then these guys have barrier and also blocker so this guy is a blocker this guy is a blocker etc etc and that's in of itself very very annoying not to mention the other parts in uh, kind of I mean you can play the G or Gine Gine whatever she's called you, you can play the pen pretty safely now that she has um, this is what great 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 grandpa yeah great great grandpa who's protecting her who can uh you can drop from your hand and then draw as like a mini frieza um and then all of the universe seven or universe 11 now has barrier basically i mean i don't think there well there are a couple cards in which um can actually uh or doesn't get barrier because it is over three or three or three or more well over three yeah over three there you go i can i can speak english especially this guy this guy is so annoying if you've been playing me on untap i hate this guy so much uh he not only has barrier but he doesn't tie for uh each of the turn and since you can play as many as you want um 
Uh, that's also annoying. So you can have two, they both don't die, and they, they can't be popped. So that's always fun. Let's uh let's kind of move on to legendary flute. So, legendary flute. This is uh, a blue card for zero cost. It doesn't have any kind of cost, but your leader does have to be blue, and you can choose one or your one of your. So that's something that people kind of misread. And then your or your opponent's battle cards with three or less and return it through the hand. And if it was your card, you draw one. So there's a lot of implications, I would say, with this this card. Uh, ignore the set for Doctor Mew, and. Um, the, the, the thing about this card is that there is so much versatility to it and I, I think it's probably one of the my, one of my favorite cards I mean the one drop criticals and, and stuff like that are really good but for blue I think this is one of my favorite cards so when you do have legendary flutes or when you use it the the same thing kind of goes when it comes uh, comes around to the one drop Bardock, Bardock or anything that helps you self awaken so for this guy when you play him you choose one from your hand and uh, one life from your one card from your life and add it to your hand, right? So if you're playing for some reason yellow blue, um, and you're playing Super Saiyan God Super or Super Saiyan God Goku, <laughs> and you attack and you untap uh, after you play him, take a life and then retir return him, draw one card, and then play him again, take another life. Uh, you got two life, two cards. And, I mean, if you have another legendary flute, you can do it again, and then um, keep netting cards that way. The other part of it is for, um, you know, obviously you can use Unyielding or Sensu Bean for any of these combos, but the other thing is that uh, Bulma is a very interesting one drop. So if you play her, activate main, you uh, switch it to rest mode, and then you draw one card, which is always great, and then you choose another battle card like him or whoever. Uh, a lot of the red is, is good targets for that or are good targets for that. And then you can play Legendary Flute, draw another card, and then just do it again for the next, uh, next turn. So uh, all of these one-drop criticals or the one-drop uh, take lifers or whatever are good too because you can actually swing, take a life, go for critical, and then use a Legendary Flute, draw a card, and then just do it again next round to safely go ahead and just do it again. So that is very, very cool. Very, very good in itself. Uh, I, I really like it. And uh, the other one is here. I mean, you can always use it for the Tapion, but the one drops are really useful because that way you can just use one uh, energy in itself or just for that play. Uh, but this guy, you can take two life and then return one of their battle cards for five or less and place it on top of their deck, which is also annoying because you, now you know what they're going to be drawing and they have to play it again if it is like a four or less or something like that. Um, plus, you can do it again if, they're, if they are actually uh, stalling you out. So that's always good. The other thing is uh, stuff like this where, uh, again, they're, they're kind of endless. So like the Champa that searches the top seven for another Champa, the one that looks like furthering destruction. If you don't hit it there, you can do it again. For a blue leader, I don't know if you're gonna be doing that, but if you're doing crit, like a, a crit blue leader, hey, 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 deck profile might coming up. That might be pretty cool. Same thing for Kind Sand. You can net a card, search, uh, well, search, net a card, and then uh, swing, do it again and then keep going, especially if you're going for like a Vegito deck or um, you can get the Victory Striker too, uh, that way too, because I, I think he is just Son Goku, so you know. Uh, same thing for the other one drops in which you can search for this guy, or for this girl, top seven for Trunks, Vegeta, or Bulma GT. You get that idea. Uh, and then uh, the other thing about it is that you can use Overrealm. I, I was going to mention these, but these are kind of like I mean, you can already know. You, I mean, that's kind of obvious. The You play the boo, you draw one, you return it, play it again, you draw again. So that's three cards netted right there. Um, the other thing is that the uh, Overrealm is also very useful. So even if you are playing a blue leader, this card right here, you can when you attack or combo with this card, especially if you are playing, let's say, uh, anything. Like if you have three in your drop area already, or if you have something on your on your field, you can go ahead and swing with it, uh, combo with this uh, for a little bit of aggression, uh, drop the top three or drop the top two because this is going to be in there already, play the time patrol chunks, and then use a legendary flute after that because if you want that card uh, afterwards, because you look at the top two and you choose one, add it to your hand, and then put it on top or bottom. If you put it on top, you can play this, this card again, and then... Um, uh, you'll know exactly what card you'll do uh, that you'll get 
and you can always do it again so there you go there's some plays for you you can do this card too uh i am beginning to like this card as well where you just look at the top three choose one battle card among them add it to your hand and then look at or place the remaining at the bottom of your deck and you can always do that with that one too but time patrol trunks really make sense with this so I think hopefully I'm not over 10 minutes. Uh, if you know any other combos, any other deck tech, anything that I didn't go over, please let me know in the comments. I uh, I am I am excited to hear exactly what you think and what I may have missed or what you may have under your sleeve or in your sleeve, whatever. <laughs> so uh, that is it. If you like this, let me know. If you want a different sort of um, uh formats or anything if you don't like this format let me know uh if you if you are a subscribe thank you and if you aren't a subscribe if you did watch the video thank you and i'll see you in the next one later <laughs>